back with another video. This video is going to be a bit different. It's going to be analyzing the big six clubs and different build-up tendencies they have and a brief introductory video to this concept of building out from the back in the first third of the field from the big six clubs. So first we have Tottenham and this is based on just generally the big six so not present table standing teams at the moment also made using keyframe in the link will be in the description below so be sure to check that out and in the description as well a uh, huge um, piece here there will be a powerpoint and as memberships come out for the channel there will be powerpoints to go along with each video so you get more quality content and the membership will pretty much guarantee a powerpoint for each video that comes out so you get more out of the concepts and if you want to take the content at your own pace. But Tottenham generally play in the first third of the field using their center back, splitting the goalkeeper, which we'll see with pretty much every team when they use the goalkeeper, the central defenders are split by the goalkeeper, and now a double pivot is formed. And this includes the eight of Ndombele, who also has the freedom to move forward depending on the situation and the personnel within the Tottenham team. The fullbacks pretty much have the have similar roles depending on, on who plays where, but the big difference is the double pivot and the varying height of Ndombele or whoever is playing in this eight role. And then now just off your screen, we have Harry Kane and running beyond him are players like Hing Ling Sun and Lucas Mora making inverted narrow runs to then take advantage of the space left by typically a jumping central defender from the defensive team. So with Tottenham's buildup, it's very much about attracting the press via first line passes or initial ball carries from the central defenders to attract the press from, in this case, Aston Villa to then create space further up the field through the half spaces and central corridor where Harry Kane will be checking. But when the ball is played from the wide area through the center backs, as we see here, this will guarantee a safer, longer pass in terms of the, the variability that comes with a longer pass and the lack of security. So with the double pivot, they have added security for their defensive transition and with the narrow wingers and dropping Harry Kane they have more numbers in the central central corridors of the field which also helps secure a defensive transition but very much Tottenham play more direct and looking to exploit the space right away after they commit the team to a press and even before they commit the team to a press they look to take advantage of the space. Now Arsenal, with their struggles at times, they've switched a little bit and Arteta likes to play with player roles, maybe a little too much at times for the personnel he has. But in the last game, we saw the asymmetry of the fullbacks with Colin Chambers starting deeper. But typically when it's Hector Bellerin on the right fullback position, he gets higher as well as Kieran Tierney, which allows for narrow wingers like Saka and uh, players like Smith Rowe to play in this position or Odengard. So they have um, more attacking players in these advanced roles because of the ability of the fullbacks and the qualities of the fullbacks to play in a high wide position, creating width of the team. And when you create width through the fullback, it typically stretches the midfielders out more because they have to defend higher up the field and the full width. So from here, the next key point will be through Shaka. And Shaka's tendency now is to drop into the wider area to the left side of the field and to take advantage of his left foot as the left footed playmaker. But we also see with Thomas Partey coming into the team, Shaka's responsibility to play higher up the field as well, to create asymmetry and to manipulate the defense in the spaces that's available. So typically, if 
Chaka plays higher up the field, the response from the defense will follow suit and thus creating more space for the first line option. So basically from the double pivot we can see a logical movement of players to access the space and take advantage of them. So from here, in the last match, we saw them play West Ham and come from three goals down to then tie up the game. And when they simplified their buildup after the first 10-15 minutes, it became more coherent with what Arsenal do lately. And we have Odengard, Thomas Partey, Shaka, and now Lacazette dropping deeper to create and occupy the central three corridors. And with Lacazette dropping deeper, they now outnumber the holding midfielder two to one, so creating numerical superiority. Also a very big trend from Arsenal, as well as we see Kieran Tierney on this side as a wide fullback, stretching the connections from the West Ham players just enough to then create spaces between these players and progress via the half spaces in a more controlled manner. So we see a staggered 4-1-3-2 in response to the Arsenal concepts and build up. So now looking at Chelsea's moving forward. Chelsea, the big difference with them is their back three and their three central defenders. So two of the defenders typically Asbio Aquaita and the most central defender, sometimes Thiago Silva, but now Christensen since he's been out injured. They both move to the right side of the goalkeeper and creating an asymmetry in the numbers and the numerical structure that Chelsea dis deploy. So with this, it changes the reference points on how the teams press them because with this asymmetry and two central defenders occupying the half face and wide area on one side and just Rudiger on this strong side, it causes them different situations because of their greater connections. One, more connections on the right side and typically smaller connections or stronger connections because of the smaller distances between them on the right side versus the more space on the left side of their buildup. And their double pivot, but with Conte playing more a little bit more as an eight and Jorginho having the tendency to move back and split the two forwards or to be the placeholder as the holding midfielder behind the front three, depending on the structure they play against. And Conte then will typically play more in the right half space further up the field and creating a staggering between these two players. So moving forward, we can see as we did, we have Rudiger on the left, our two central defenders on the right, and our double pivot staggered in their positioning. And if we just look at the connections on this right side, we can see the mutual help space, the right, the red passing options are the ones that are blocked. And then the green will be the ones that are available. And just the four, three passing options in the mutual help space, we can see the tighter connections on this right side because of the numerical difference between the right and left. Whereas on the left side, there's more space for players like Mason Mount to drop into on this side through the half space as well as a player like Timo Werner or Hakim Ziyech to play through the half space on the right side. So using the numerical superiority concept to then create a four-man midfield box and look to progress play via the half spaces using numerical superiority. And as we see here, third man concept also comes in handy when you have more players around the ball, you can easily access the free player and take advantage of a defense using cover shadows. So now Manchester City, and they definitely have the most versatile buildup of any team in the Premier League 
with Ederson being able to exploit his range of passing and the decision making from the players in Manchester City. So typically they play with a double pivot. Oftentimes we see Cancelo coming in from the right fullback position and occupying this double, double pivot role. But also something that we see is a varying distance between connections of players. Often their central defenders will play in the wide areas. And what this does is it puts them in an advantageous position to progress the ball past the line of pressure. And they do this by playing in the blind side of the defender. So as we see here, Loftus-Cheek is just in the half space, drawn to, to the ball a little bit, as we see here. And we see his body orientation, his hips, and his field of view leaving Diaz or John Stones here in the blind side to take his first touch to potentially eliminate the first line of defense and then enter the next line of defense with tight connections in the midfield as well as advanced area options. And one thing we see from City is the commitment to their wide wingers. And how they do this is they typically have their two holding midfielders and maybe we have Jao Cancelo in the further right half space. We have Gabriel Jesus a lot of times, and then uh, someone like Gunduan in the left half space. So they have a five-man midfield, and then two very um, wide wingers to start to then exploit any jumping defenders and um, to take advantage of space in, in behind as well as Ederson's range of passing. So everything's very coherent. So they have a five-man midfield, typically giving them numerical superiority. And if not numerical superiority, they have the positional superiority further up the field, as well as qualitative to take advantage of the space left by the opposing teams. So from here, what we talked about with the connections, playing in the blind side of defenders and varying the length, so each center defender is playing outside the penalty area, giving them free access to take their first touch forward to potentially break lines and have solid connections via the double pivot, as well as giving the double pivot numerical superiority against the one attacking mid or however the teams look to um, prevent access into this area. So now Manchester United, again, we have our three-man build-up using De Gea, building up against a 5-3-2 of West Ham. And from here, Manchester United's biggest, I'd say, their biggest concept is their double pivot and the movement of them. And we often see a staggered double pivot with a lone pivot here. And then their other central midfielder who usually play side by side then goes higher up the field to then play more as an eight. And a lot of times I notice their players sometimes might lack the, um, the resolutions or lack the insight to gain solutions um, for the match's problems. So they might arrive in these positions, but based on their body shape and the where they scan and the information they retain, they often make their attacks more narrow than they're, they're often should be or they often need to be. But the main concept is their staggering double pivot and their rotating players in the midfield third. And we also see they can play with a double pivot, no problem. A little bit of asymmetry with Harry Maguire going to a less dense area, which fits his qualities better. The double pivot playing alongside each other then creating numerical superiority, but just one situation on how they can lack context in the play because essentially two players here do the, do the same role as one, but this comes in handy when they create press resistant structures through the wide area and progress via a narrow route of progression. So here, the press resistant wide structures we have using the double pivot 
and then we would have a, a similar structure on this weak side with Luke Shaw as the fullback. So pretty symmetrical. And then now we'd have Bruno Fernandez as a free roll looking to create space in between the lines higher up the field. And this is one example of their, the insight the players get when they scan and the information they retain. We have McTominay scanning further up the field in the half space, but he doesn't recognize on how West Ham are playing with one advanced midfielder, Suchek, controlling two double pivots. So when Suchek commits to McTominay, the free player with Fred will be there for easy progression into space. So when the ball travels to McTominay, Fred is the free player and the attack becomes more narrow than it needs to be and oftentimes this leads to less control over over possession and less control when entering the midfield third after their initial progression because of their uh, their lack of insight and where to scan and how to scan and this all stems from their body position as a double pivot so now the last team liverpool liverpool again use their goalie split their goalie with their two center back and then Typically, they have two deeper uh, midfielders, usually a lone pivot, as we see from Milner here. And Jeannie Wijnaldum is then typically the player, the deep line playmaker, as we'll see more of. He'll drop into the left half space, thus releasing Andy Robertson and Alexander Tr Arnold to create asymmetry in their passing connection, so Alexander Arnold would stay, Andy Robertson would be released, Firmino dropping between the lines with narrow wingers running beyond him. So here we see Genie Wijnaldum dropping deeper, thus creating space for the lone pivot James Milner in this situation to then break lines, but then Further ahead of him, we'll have uh, Roberto Firmino and a lot of times Thiago playing through the half spaces and the whiff created by the fullbacks and now allowing the wingers to invert and look for routes of progression in a more direct sense and further up the field. So that's the analysis, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.